this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to do a smackdown between the three new Windows 8.1 8 inch tablets all running on the same Intel Atom Bay Trail CPU. Here we have the Lenovo Mix, the Dell Venue 8 Pro and the Toshiba Encore. I'm going to look at them now. So here we have three Windows 8.1 affordable 8 inch tablets. Right here we have the Dell Venue 8 Pro, the Lenovo Mix 2 8 and the Toshiba Encore. They all run on the Intel Atom Bay Trail quad core 1.33 gigahertz CPU. So you're looking at twice the performance for last year's Bay Trail models, and that's significant. It's definitely, at this point, they're usable. You wouldn't want to use these as your main machine, but at 8 inches, you know, they're clearly not designed to be your main machine, but they can run desktop apps just fine. Speaking of which, Windows 8.1 full access to the desktop on these guys. You can see right here, standard Windows desktop, not the Windows RT version. This is full Windows. They can all run EXE programs, iTunes, Minecraft, Photoshop, those kind of things. Now, they're not. none of them are gaming tablets. You're not going to be playing Battlefield 4 on these, honestly, even at low settings. Forget about it. But casual games, sure. Uh, less demanding games, yeah, you could do it. World of Warcraft at really low settings, that kind of thing. And that gets to point number one you're looking at pretty much the same processing power. In fact, the same processing power. They all use the Intel Atom Z3740 CPU. The Dell uses the D version of that CPU. The only difference is it can only address two gigs of RAM. Guess what? All of these have only two gigs of DDR3 RAM soldered on board, not upgradable. So it doesn't really matter. They all have turbo boost, so you can go up to 1.8 gigahertz or so for turbo boost speeds on these. 2 gigs of RAM again, and 32 or 64 gigs of eMMC storage. That's the sort of like permanent internal SD card style storage, not the fast SSD drive that's used on Ultrabooks. Pricing wise, you're looking at pretty close to the same thing. Both the at 32 gig, both the Dell and the Lenovo Mix 8 are $299. The Toshiba Encore is $329. Hmm. Now you might find it on sale for $299, but then again, the Dell has been on sale for, well, less than $299. So therefore, probably the price difference is always going to be there as a differential. What does the Toshiba get you for that? It gets you an HDMI port. It's the only one that has a micro HDMI port. It also has a higher resolution camera. 8 megapixel on the back here, and it does take somewhat better shots than the other two that have 5 megapixel cameras on the back. Next up, in terms of display resolution, again, you're looking at the same thing. 1280 by 800, but all of them have wide viewing angles, IPS kind of technology on board. They all look pretty nice and sharp. You know, you're not going to see much of a difference in these. The, the one that's at a, something of a disadvantage is the Toshiba. It has more glare. It seems like the display is glass is elevated a little bit more above the LCD. It's also the least bright. We're talking 300 nits here. Around 400 nits for the Dell, over 500 nits for the Lenovo. So for those of you who need to use these outdoors and you need the brightest display possible, the Lenovo Mix 2 8 would be a good choice. Even with this dark display here, you can see that it stays quite visible and off angles. And sure, they all reflect. They're all glossy, but it's reflecting obviously less than the Toshiba. And finally, our Dell here. This one seems to disappear a little bit more off angle, mostly on camera. In person, it actually stays looking pretty good. The Dell's auto brightness is a bit too aggressive, so I turn it off on the Dell. So you can see here we have a nice colorful backdrop, and all of these do have nice colors. They're not super wide color gamut displays, but they're nice enough, honestly speaking. If I had to pick my favorite, I would say the Mix 2 8 has well, obviously the nicest brightness and a little bit sharper colors, but the Dell really is also quite nice. And the Toshiba has pretty good colors. Honestly, it, it's the glare that sometimes makes the colors look a little bit milky, but if you're looking at straight on without glare, it's pretty nice too. But I would still put the Toshiba in third place for display quality. When we're talking about ports, everything is the same except for micro HDMI. These things all are running on the same platform. Same features, micro SD XC card slot on all of these. We have micro HDMI. That's what sets this one apart. For those of you who want to plug this into a HD TV or into a monitor, that makes life much easier. The others do not have HDMI ports at all. You have to use Miracast wireless display, which is 
built into Windows 8.1, and it's kind of the newer version of Intel Wide Eye, but I don't think a lot of you have Miracast receivers yet. Netgear does make their push the TV latest version that supports Miracast. Some TVs are coming out with it. Micro USB port here, and all of these are going to have that same micro USB port on them, and they all do double duty for charging and as a USB host port. So on the Lenovo, you can see we have our headphone jack up here. They all have combo audio headphone jacks. There's our USB port on the Lenovo. So, two amp charger, pretty much like an iPad style charger, very compact. Also, these all have similar battery capacity on them. If you want to use the USB port as a host port to use keyboards, mice, 4G, LTE dongles, that kind of thing, you're going to need a little USB on the go adapter. None of these includes that in the box. And there's our side view of the Dell with our micro USB port right here. Now, in terms of build quality, fit, finish, and looks, they're all put together pretty sturdily. I, I like the grippiness of the Dell. It has a kind of black swirled rubbery back here. It feels nice. It looks pretty classy. It's, for something that's only 300 bucks, it's not too bad, honestly. The Lenovo, and these are about the same thickness and about the same weight, by the way, which is about a little over three quarters of a pound, or I believe that's 445 grams for those of you who speak metric. You can see they're about as thin. And the Lenovo has a combination of a metal and a plastic back. It looks pretty nice, pretty classy. Too many stickers on the back, but that's easily cured with just peeling them all off if you want to. Single speaker up here on the Lenovo. Lenovo calls these stereo speakers, so unless they're talking about two itsy drivers side by side, I, I would consider this effectively mono. Our Dell speaker is right over here, the loudest and fullest of these three tablets in terms of using the built-in speaker for audio. They all sound fine, fine over a headphone jack. And lastly, our Toshiba wins the, as I said in our review of it, hit with the Ugly Stick Award. Looks like plastic, is plastic, it's thicker, it's chunkier, it's less attractive. It weighs a bit more too, it weighs almost a pound. So aesthetically speaking, the Toshiba is the challenge one. The other two are quite nice looking. Of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You might find this just cuddly and awesome to hold. Who knows? Now the Dell special sauce, but aha, this is going to cost you extra unless you buy one of the bundles that includes a pen or a pen in a case, that kind of thing, is this pen costs about 30 bucks. It's an active pen. It's a new synaptics technology. Usually we see Entrig and Wacom. First time we've seen synaptics. And if you watch my review of this, you know that this pen is a little quacky and weird. So Dell's been working on updating the drivers. We've been through a couple of pens and some people say if you press really hard on the point and make sure it's well lodged in here, you'll get better performance. It's become fairly usable. It's not up to the mayhem that it was before where it was just you can see it's still doing some of that. The, the hovering turns into a click sometimes, but the click is controlled. It has a very high hover distance. It's odd. Anyway, potentially when Dell gets the drivers working a little better on this, for those of you who want to take notes with the pen or use this as a portable sketch pad, and the neat thing is you can run all those Windows programs like Art Rage, those kinds of things. So there's a, nice, a wealth of Windows programs for drawing. You can do that with the Dell. It's the only one of these three to offer that. And even the, the Acer Iconia W4 that's coming out competing with these guys, it does not have the pen technology either. Now Lenovo does sell a pen as an option with their tablet. Don't be fooled. It's a capacitive kind of pen. It is not an active pen that's precise and pressure sensitive. Unsurprisingly, because these all run the same operating system on the same hardware with the same resolution display, these have about the same battery life. Depends on what you're doing with them to a certain extent, whether you have auto brightness enabled anywhere from five to eight hours on a charge. Eight hours if you're just reading ebooks, surfing the web. Shorter times if you're playing, streaming a lot of HD video, doing anything that requires a lot of processor intensive stuff, like say working with Photoshop images or playing 3D games on them. They all have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11 BGN and Bluetooth 4.0. For our US models, there is no 3G, 4G option on any of these yet. It probably will be coming. Dell said that they would be doing that. Lenovo often does. Probably won't see that for US models with Toshiba. Now, it, it, in your country, that could be different. That kind of thing does vary from country to country. So in the end, what you're looking at is three really similar tablets. So you can see what the differences are there. The price difference, $30 more for the Toshiba HDMI port for the Toshiba, a little higher resolution rear camera. The digital pen option for the Dell, which is pretty cool. And Lenovo is the thinnest and lightest. It's not that far off from the Dell. And it has that kind of cool, nice looking metal back for those of you who like that kind of look. Functionally, you're getting the same thing beyond those with all three tablets. 
So as you can see, they have more in common than they're different actually. So it's really gonna come down to in the end which brand you like the best, whether you need that HDMI port and how important the camera is. And also the pen on the Dell. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our review of each of these products, read our written reviews, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.